any discussion of the price on pollution needs to start with the reality. Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. My name's David. Today, we've got a clip here from Christia Freeland. Reporters are pressing her on what's in the budget, what's going on in Canada, all sorts of things. And they ask her about if Justin Trudeau will meet with the premiers who want to talk about the carbon tax. Trudeau just keeps saying, oh, I met with them in 2016. That's good enough. And so she's pressed on it again in this press conference here. And well, <laughs> her response, check it out. Good morning. My question is for the Deputy Prime Minister. There's an opposition day motion today calling on your government to hold an emergency carbon tax meeting with the premiers, all premiers. Will you hold that meeting? Um, our government has been very clear and the Prime Minister has been very clear about our position on the price on pollution. I think any discussion of the price on pollution needs to start with the reality. And that is that our rebates deliver more money to eight out of 10 Canadians. Enough than the lies. Can. The rebates are really an affordability measure that help the most vulnerable. We can't lose sight of that in this conversation. Let's just point out real quick, the Conservatives found out that basically they took $20 billion of Canadians' money, they gave back $18 billion, and there's still $2.1 billion missing that they won't say anything about. Let's just be real with the numbers here, as well as the Parliamentary Budget Officer has said both things. They said, yes, 8 out of 10 get more back at the top surface level, but once you incorporate the carbon tax into every single step of the process, six out of 10 are worse off. Now, I think the parliamentary budget officer is really being quite conservative with these numbers. It's probably nine or 9.5 out of 10 get less back. The effects on everything here, like I'm just finding out that Car insurance rates are going up, not only from car thefts, but also because inflation, which is driven by how much the Liberals are spending and the carbon tax. The carbon tax is by nature inflationary. Second thing that is really, really important, and I'm speaking now as the finance minister, um, for us to recognize is in 2024, it is not possible to have an economic plan without having a climate plan. And the reason for that is really simple. Canada is a trading nation. If we want foreign investors to invest in Canada, if we want other countries to buy what we are producing, we need to have a strong climate plan. Otherwise, Why? Canada will simply not be able to participate in the global economy and that is what, what does that have to do with anything basically every nation around the world doesn't have a climate plan and they trade with each other what what does that have to do with anything this is the stupidest thing i've ever heard in my life is america not going to trade with us america doesn't have a climate plan should we be trading with them <laughs> let's just look at this logically this is the dumbest thing one of the dumbest things she's ever said it's really important for people to recognize as well and then finally um, since you raised the question of the premiers, uh, I think it's uh, really important also for us all to remember that there are a couple of provinces and a territory um, who have their own provincial territorial climate plans. Those meet the federal benchmark. They work. They are widely supported by the people of BC, no. by the people of Quebec. Those it is not supported by the people of BC. Let's just get real here. David Eby, the guy currently in power for the NDP in BC, was not elected. He was not vote. No one voted for that man. The people of BC voted for John Horgan years ago, and John Horgan made many promises, including protecting old growth, which he did not upkeep. The first thing he did when he got in power is he let the old growth get completely slashed. That's a man who's an absolute liar and a loser who didn't keep his promises to the people. Later, John Horgan got cancer twice, fought off cancer twice, and then decided to step down. So then David Eby took over. These are a couple of losers. These are not men of integrity. These are men who line their own pockets with cash. Sure, you'll find some lunatics out here support the carbon tax, thinking paying money to the government somehow does something for the environment. But anyone with half a brain realizes that's absolute nonsense. These are plans, by the way, that were put in place you know, in BC by a center-right government, a world-leading plan. And our government is really 
really open to any province or territory coming forward with its own provincial or territorial plan. That's a conversation we'd love to have. Thank you. Yeah, she didn't answer that question at all. There was no answer to that. Trudeau won't answer it. He keeps saying, oh yeah, I met with them uh, back in 2016. Just watch here. She actually asked her again. Thank you. With respect, I didn't hear a clear answer on whether you will <laughs> hold this meeting. But just as a follow-up on another topic. So she starts asking another topic and just it's more nonsense. Uh, this is classic uh, Christia Freeland here. She's, you know, not answering questions. They've, they've now doubled down on this. Oh, no one wants to trade with Canada unless we have this amazing climate plan. The other countries don't give a rats about a climate plan. A trade deal is a trade deal. We give you this lumber at a discount. You give us your corn or whatever at a discount. That's what trade plans are. Not like, oh, well, how many carbon credits did you plant 16 trees for every, you know, <laughs> like, no, that's not a part of the deal. No one cares about that. What they care about is a good deal. It's, it's, does this benefit you? Does this benefit me? It's, that's how trading works in nations. If this government actually wanted to be taken serious about climate plan and saving the environment, then start showing numbers, start showing research and show what you're doing with that carbon tax money. In BC here, it's been shown that the BC NDP has been laundering this money through the EV grant program, plug in BC into a company called MNP. Just look at my Edison Motors video. They're just funneling money into there and whoever owns that or whoever's part of that company as a whole, uh, they're getting rich off that. It's not benefiting a company like Edison Motors, the only company in BC, probably the only one in Canada, heck, probably only the one in North America who's making an EV slash diesel hybrid big logging truck. They're getting no grants and they're the only company doing this. This is obviously a big scam. If they were getting grants and it was actually pushing technology forward further like this, then maybe like, okay, they are helping. They're not helping. They're just trying to line their own pockets with a 20% kickback. This, the government is just so corrupt, it's ridiculous. Once again, the liberals have no climate plan. They have no proof of anything that they're doing for benefits the climate. They're not like using these carbon tax dollars to build 3D printed, you know, house building machines or whatever that are low emission and low this and this and that, and they're super green and equal and it's it's better for Canadians and they're gonna reduce the cost of, like they don't do any of that. They're just a bunch of losers with no vision. So, <laughs> excuse my rant here. I'm just so sick of these clips of this stupid government. They're just so stupid. And they think that we don't see what they're doing, which is just basically, I think they're just straight laundering our money into Ukraine and they're going to get rich after they get out of power and they're just, they're trying to do it as long as they can. That's why they, they're not stepping down. They're not calling an election. They know they'll lose and they just want to keep this up as long as they can to squeeze as many dollars out as they can before they get kicked out. Thanks for stopping by and watching the episode here. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. I'll keep bringing you the truth, the honest truth, the uncorrupt truth, unlike this pathetic uh, liberal government that we see here. I'll see you guys in the next one.